Hey everyone, I'm not dead. Schematis here again. So I'm going to make a video that's been requested for a really long time ever since I started this series, and that is how to make an RPG final boss theme song. Now, this is a fun one. I didn't I was I was a little hesitant, right? It's it's hard. Um it's also a big big factor of what kind of uh, video game you're composing for so I really went the route of like a traditional retro style JRPG RPG style turn-based that's just where I grew up this is probably not gonna work for everyone but if it does then you know give me some feedback and if it doesn't as well give me some feedback let me know what's going on what you feel but my main purpose here is not to show you the right way but to show you a method or just a workflow process you can always tweak and add to it later so don't shoot me or anything like that it's fine so i know this has been requested for some time and i i just now got to it schoolwork has been crazy i do not like grad school i'm almost done but i'm not going to take too much time i want to get right into this so i'm going to play the track in its entirety and then i'm going to break it down in its bits and pieces so there's a lot going on here but it's not complicated. I love simplicity, and let's get into it.
So when it comes down to last boss themes, I think of my favorites like Kuja from Final Fantasy IX or Sephiroth, the really sick, twisted, demented kind of a character, right? And I love that because the minute, the first minute of your boss theme probably should summarize that personality, right? The protagonist has gone through this whole journey from beginning of the, the game to the end where they've gone through all these side quests and went through deserts, storms, and winters just to get to this person, right? This this being that's been pulling strings from the beginning of the game till the end. You've got to summarize their personality with sound in this section. Uh, even for me, the boss theme I feel really doesn't kick in until at least a minute in. And I think that's fine, right? It's okay to have a nice, you know, build up, but it doesn't have to be crazy. And again, what did it for me were the two piano patterns I have here. Piano one here and piano two. Everything that comes after, in this, in this area down here below, all came from first setting up the piano. The piano did everything, and I'm going to explain how right now. These were the chords that the whole song is based around. I did not venture out too far from these chords, and it did take me a while to find them. Now, this is why I really wanted to make this tutorial. If you're like me, and you've never really had a background in music theory, or you just don't really understand how chords may work or things of that nature, I would strongly suggest to pick up a MIDI keyboard and just hit YouTube tutorials and learn the basics because I didn't just come up with these chords off the top of my head. And this is why for the future videos, I want to start doing these live so you can see the frustrating points of trying to find the right sound and the right notes. But once I found them and this combination here, it basically wrote everything. I was able to make the bass line off of these notes. I was able to find supporting um, chords for the strings with these notes. And everything just flowed very well as long as I didn't play too far out of bounds with the chords I've created in this section. I'm going to play it so you can hear it, and then we'll go off and build from there. What that chord progression does for us is tell us exactly which notes we can use and which notes are going to sound good if we place them in other instruments throughout our project. If we look at them and uh, study them, and if we don't deviate too far from where they're placed, no matter what, if we pick notes in that same area, they're going to work. And this is where it made it easier to write my bass lines. And I love writing bass lines. It's one of my favorite things to do, even now. And I have a couple going on here. I've got a, a bass guitar going here. I've got an electronic piano going here. And I've got an organ that is mimicking the exact same pattern as the electronic piano. If I dig in here a little bit. In fact, I'm going to play this because I think it makes sense. And if you look at the notes, you might not be able to tell right off the bat. But these notes are the same notes that were placed throughout in that piano chord section. So the piano chord section makes everything here okay and that's why i feel a chord progression is way more important than jumping to the melody in fact i do melodies last which is why a lot of this project is going to be grayed out because i don't want to be distracting with anyone i want to get the core fundamental building blocks for the track and then you can see how you can layer it any way you choose even my drums are turned off so it's not going to be too distracting so i'm going to play this here you can hear how it sounds with the chord progression added with the bass lines in fact, I'll cut this one out a little bit just for some variation. What I really like about doing these is that when I go back and look at it, it shows just how little is really needed to push the project in your intended direction. Even with all the stuff still grayed out at this point of the song, it still sounds like it's going toward a dark, ominous, sinister feeling. 
and I love that. So you don't need too much happening, and this is why I want to keep most of this stuff away because it's just extra, and this is gonna confuse. Like, this is not really anything crazy. There are sweeps, there are arps here, arpeggiated like synths, but this is stuff that is just layering. The when you have the foundation, you can do anything you want, and it's gonna sound good for the most part, right? So what I did was for this section where the song really starts to pick up in intensity, we're not gonna go crazy. This piano, piano number two that we've used, this chord progression, we're not gonna forget about it. And that's where this one comes in. Piano eight, which I have grayed out. I'm gonna turn it on now. Piano eight is essentially a direct copycat from piano two. The only thing different were maybe the last couple of three notes or so. I changed these going downwards instead of upwards to lead into a more seamless loop for this section here to make more sense, right? Then, I added some strings in here. And these strings, the notes for these strings, they're not at all random. These strings are again based on the same notes that came from that piano chord progression. Without that piano chord progression, I would not have come up with this. These are not me like flying around the keyboard and, and killing myself. I already killed myself making that first piano progression, so I didn't have to think about what notes to put in there. Not too hard anyway. That's why I feel like the melody and all of that should be secondary or even third or fourth put it way down the line it's not that needed but you know and i'm not even the best i think i my drums here are not the best you know my melodies are not the greatest but it's just easier you know for the sake of variation i'll delete some of these but i'll put the drums on here and i'll put the melody on here right and i'll leave everything else grayed out so the only thing that's really happening in this section are the piano the bass line the strings and then now we have a melody in the ba in the drums going here, but to make sure that the song wasn't boring, this is where piano three comes in. Piano three is another piano melody, still based around the same notes used in piano chord or in piano pattern two, for that same exact progression. That's where these notes are being made from. Again, I'm not pulling these out of nowhere. So if anything, if you get lost, go back to your chord progression, look at the notes you've used, and if they make sense, use the same patterns in various forms and they will be right. That's what I'm trying to get across here. You don't have to kill yourself, but let me play this in its entirety here. This is the main chunk, the, the part that you really want your player to hum. And uh, it's gonna sound about like this. guys I know the video is running a little bit long but try and bear with me this is the end this is the climax this is the area where the song is going to hit the, the the boiling point the highest point it could hit and then it's gonna drop right back down for the loop in this general area here but this part is one of my favorites because it's where you don't need to do too much the only thing you need are the addition of maybe one to two instruments that have a really powerful effect if you've seen any of my last videos you'd know that i am a choir junkie so i'm gonna go down here to the celestial choir i have here and i think i got these from celestia uh, from impact soundworks but um if you have it you know it's it's quite taxing on the machine and my computer's already eating up a ton of RAM. So I'm not gonna push too much and I'm gonna put on my French horn here. So with those two instruments alone, in addition to what we have already had before, which was the organ, the bass lines, the strings, and the piano, this, these two are gonna really throw it over the edge, right? It's gonna create that climax moment. I did change the piano pattern, right? 
and not too different from what we had before in Piano 3. In fact, Piano 3 was the big selling point for Piano Pattern number 5. Um, just looking at it, you can see it's made up of the same notes, again, similar from Piano Pattern 3, in the same realm. It doesn't get out of hand. It, it looks very, very similar, and the notes are loosely based around it, but I didn't fly off the handle. I didn't get too explorative. I'm still in the safe zone because the notes that I used here are the same notes that I used here, which also are the same notes that were going on in Piano Pattern 2. See how it all relates? You use this one anchor and let it keep going. The Piano 5 needed to be changed to create some variation to show the, the epicness of this next section. And that's going to sound like this. Now this is it. This is the end. After the climax and after that huge build up and that that final epic launch and you've gotten that celestial divine feeling, you can start stripping away instruments now. This is where you start to dial things back and you prepare for the loop and this is where things get easy, right? The only thing I did here really was I created a new piano pattern, but it's still in the same realm, it's still in the same key right? It's still using that same chord progression notes of, in the same pattern in different varieties of ways, but it's not adventurous. It's not going way out of line. It's in that safe zone of the notes that I use here. That's how I knew that that pattern was going to work, right? That's how I knew these notes were all safe. And then when you go down, you know, actually for the sake of this, since the song is ending, I'll turn everything back on, right? There. That makes it much easier so you can actually hear how it was intended to sound, right? With the drums and everything, and even the, the, my leads are going to come back on. What I'm trying to get at is this little bitty section here, this is just the slowdown. This is the slowdown where everything is going to calm down, the player's going to start to relax a little bit, and then the, it's going to lead right back into the loop, right back into the action sequence of the song right here, and then the song is over with. So... I feel like the hardest parts are really the intro, right? The first beginning minute to a minute and a half, that's where most of the work is going to come in. Once you've got that, the song writes itself. So I'm going to play this here, and then you can hear how it sounds, and then we can wrap up. This video ran way longer than expected, but I appreciate you sticking around. I would really love it if you guys took the time to look at my team's project. We're currently cooking up a technical platformer that was inspired by the Mega Man series and Fantasy Star. It's gonna have some beat-em-up aspects, it's gonna have some platforming aspects. I think we could bring something new to the genre. If this is something you might be interested in, in the description box below, I'm gonna drop my Twitter handle, the team's website, and our Facebook page. As usual, happy composing and cheers.